space technology is all around us. Like most people, I checked the weather forecast today. I also looked at the satellite view of this area uh, on Google Maps before coming to this venue and drove to the nearest car park using my phone, GPS location and navigation. All this information is available to us thanks to space technology, satellites on orbit around the Earth. Some of you have satellite TV at home. The antenna dish on the side of your house receives a signal from a satellite 36,000 kilometers away in space. That's incredible. Farmers use more and more space technology to manage their vast agricultural lands. They call this smart farming. They monitor soil moisture, detect diseases before they spread, predict the optimal harvest period, and so on. And this enables us to have more affordable food on our tables. Satellite images are used for urban planning, forestry, fishery, water management, to monitor air pollution, fires, to fight against animal poaching, illegal logging, and mining, and so on. We rely on space technology for defense, anti-terrorism, rescue mission, disaster warning and management, asset management, to track cargo ships at sea, for phone communication and internet in remote areas. And of course, we use satellite data to monitor changes in the Earth's climate and resources in many different ways. We are now more than 7.8 billion humans on Earth. As a species, we must constantly find ways to be more efficient in everything we do. And space technology helps us doing that on a daily basis across many sectors and in many aspects of our lives. According to a 2020 independent market study by Euroconsult, there was a total of 2,663 satellites operating on Earth's orbit at the start of 2020. And according to the study, this will increase to around 12,510 by the end of 2029. This means there will be 4.7 times more satellites in 10 years' time than we have today. That's quite a large increase. Depending on their missions, these satellites can be anywhere from the size of a double-decker bus down to satellites that can fit on the palm of my hand. Space technology potential benefits for the future are remarkable, particularly regarding climate monitoring and resource management. Now, of course, space technology, like everything, comes at a cost. It's expensive to launch these satellites into space. And so the data they generate or relay is expensive to the end user, us. We pay for it directly when we buy a satellite TV service or indirectly via government spending, for example. Space technology also has an environmental impact that we cannot ignore. This is mostly due to the production of rockets and fuel and during launch, the release of black carbon, alumina particles and gases into the upper atmosphere, which damages the ozone layer. So we need space technology to save resources and be more efficient as a civilization. But we also need to reduce the cost and environmental impact of space launch. Now, how can we increase our space capabilities and reduce the cost and environmental impact of space launch? Well, this is an engineering problem. And therefore, engineering innovation has to be the solution. Doing engineering is like playing with Lego. With enough time and ingenuity, you can build anything. Lego Technique was my favorite toy as a kid. I loved playing with all the gears, shafts, wheels, and motors. And I still do. I still do. I never actually followed the instructions to build the truck or motorcycle shown on the box. I'm way more interested in free playing with all the bits and pieces that are in the box. 
the building blocks to make anything I can imagine. And so the more quantity and variety of bits I have, the more creative I can be and the more exciting the things I can make. So eventually my parents got me a Lego Technics suitcase full of bits for one of my birthdays um, so that I would have more bits to play with. I still have it to this day. It really was a great present. And I would spend hours alone or with my siblings building some six-legged robot or whatever came to mind and then destroying it to get the bits to build the next ID. I would even modify and glue some of the bits to create new building blocks that I needed. I didn't realize it as a kid, but that is innovation. Very much like my Lego Technic suitcase, engineers also have a suitcase full of building blocks. And these building blocks are all the scientific discoveries, the inventions and all the knowledge accumulated over centuries in material science, electronics, design of structures and mechanisms, thermal engineering, fluid dynamics, mathematics, chemistry, you name it. And very much like for the Lego Technic, the innovation is in the way we put these blocks together to formulate an inventive solution that solves our technical challenge. This is the essence of engineering. So let's approach our challenge with an engineering mindset. How can we improve our space capabilities while reducing the cost and environmental impact of space launch? One way, of course, is to improve the efficiency of the rockets. It makes sense. A lot of progress has been made in this area, which is great. But there's a limit on how much we can reduce the cost and impact of the launch itself. Because launching an object onto orbit requires an enormous amount of energy. And that will not change. Another way to approach it is to fit as much technology as possible into each space launch. Hence, reducing the number of launches required. For example, if we can fit two satellites of a certain capability instead of one into a single launcher, we instantly double the launch efficiency, therefore significantly reducing the cost and environmental impact for each satellite. And the number of satellites we can fit in a single launcher is mostly down to two parameters the mass of the individual satellite, how much they weigh, and the volume of the satellites, how much space they occupy within the rocket. Okay, so to summarize, satellites should be as small and as light as possible. That's not really a surprise, right? Most of the satellite subsystems are now very efficient in terms of mass and size, um, like the batteries on board computer. But some of the subsystems can only perform well if they are very large. For instance, the solar panels. They produce power proportionally to their surface area. So if a satellite needs high power, it needs large solar panels. An antenna performance highly depends on its size. The larger the antenna, typically, the, the higher its performance. Same applies to telescopes. We need to focus on these elements of the satellite to reduce the cost and environmental impact of space launch. The antennas, telescopes, solar panels, all the systems that are large and attached to the side of the satellite body. Particularly the antennas, they are key to improving our space capabilities. So here is our new challenge. How can we make these large systems more performant and reduce their size and mass if their performance directly depends on their size? Well, here is the solution.
deployable structures. The idea is to change these large systems, like this antenna, into what we call deployable structures, so that we can fold them against the body of the satellite for launch, and then deploy them in space so they become functional. Therefore, saving an enormous amount of volume inside the rocket and saving a lot of structural mass too. In 2013, led by the entrepreneur Mike Lawton and together with my colleagues, Dr. Juan Reveles and Matthew Draper, we started a company called Oxford Space Systems, or OSS. Our aim is to provide innovative deployable structures to the global satellite industry focusing mainly on antennas. We aim to create simple and elegant solutions to this complex challenge. The antenna I just showed you is one of our development. Let me play it again in slow motion. This antenna is for a space radar, what we call a synthetic aperture radar. By sending a high-frequency signal and receiving its reflection on the Earth, it allows to build high-resolution images of the Earth from space, even at night or through clouds. It's nearly three meters in diameter, and by wrapping it around a hub, we can fit it on a satellite roughly the size of a washing machine. Here is another deployable structure. It's a deployable boom. Look at how small the mechanism is. This boom extends up to two meters in length uh, from a satellite roughly the size of a loaf of bread. It's made to carry equipment away from the satellite body, like a magnetometer, for example, so that it can measure the Earth's magnetic field without any interference from the satellite itself. The boom is made of glass fibers arranged in a very specific way to form a tape-like structure that can be easily be rolled into a small volume. And unrolled like this to form a long stick, a boom. This is the same boom deployed in space and shot by Harpoon as part of an experiment to remove space junk. The next one I want to show you is a small helical antenna. It's like a jack-in-the-box made of glass fibers. With this deployable technology, we have halved the size of the satellite. And this antenna is in space right now. It's connecting equipment and sensors on the ground to the Internet. We call this the Internet of Things and it's used for applications like the smart farming I mentioned earlier. I can't show you everything we are working on, uh, but let's see a couple more. This one is an early prototype of a parabolic antenna that deploys out of a box that will be inside a small satellite, roughly the size of a shoebox. The transparent surface you see here is a gold-plated metallic fabric. This antenna is for high data rate transmission so that small satellites can download data to the ground station much faster. We also developed a larger molded parabolic antenna surface in carbon fiber and silicon, the black surface you see on the picture. This antenna can be from 3 to 12 meters in diameter and so it wouldn't fit inside the rocket. So we made it flexible to be folded like an origami for launch, using the equipment you see here. This will be used for radar imaging or telecommunication. This is how we increase our satellite capabilities while reducing their size and mass. And this is how we can reduce the cost and environmental impact of space launch through innovative engineering. We use space technology daily. In my opinion, satellites have a key role to play in our species striving in a sustainable manner on Earth. 
we must reduce the cost and environmental impact of space technology. To make it more accessible and do what we can to preserve our planet. By developing innovative deployable space structure, we take a step forward in this direction so that we, the humans on Earth, can function more efficiently. One final thought before I leave. If, like me, you like playing with Lego, building things or solving problems, become an engineer. We need your help to build the future. You will love it, I'm sure of that. Thank you.